Hey, seventh graders, or I guess it could be seventh grade accelerated or someone else. It could be a different section, but this is for four one in seventh grade. And what are rational numbers? What is an absolute value? What are opposites? So some of this you've already seen before, but let's review probably not the rational numbers and really looking at those. You might not have seen that before, but let's look at those definitions and go through them and make sure you understand them. First of all, what is a rational number? All it is is a number that can be written as a fraction. So any decimal can be written as a fraction. So a decimal, well, as long as it's not repeating, so it has to terminate, it is going to be a rational number. So let's look at the definition of that. So rational number. And we've kind of dealt with this before. We've looked at irrational and rational and all these definitions, and they get a little confusing. Rational number is a number that can be written in the form of a fraction. So we write that like this. A number that can be written in the form a over b or negative a over b and a reminder the negative can be with the top number your numerator it could be with your denominator or it could be written in front of your fraction we can write that negative anywhere if we happen to have a negative on the a and the b that's actually a positive because you have two negatives on the same fraction but if we just have one negative i can write it here here or in front. So a rational number can be written as either one of these. Um, let's look at some examples. I would think of a rational number as any counting number. So one, two, three, four, five. Any negative counting number, which we're going to learn is called an integer. So a negative number that doesn't have fractions is an integer. Any integer is also rational. Um, any fraction and any decimal um, that doesn't, that, that terminates, that stops or repeats the same number. So I'm going to write that for you. It's not in the book, so we don't really go over it real well, but the decimal is, um, it, it terminates or stops or repeats. So it either stops or repeats. So let's look at a couple different rational numbers. So here's my first example. If I happen to have the decimal 2.4, does it stop? Yeah, it stops. So therefore, it is rational. What if it went 2.44444 forever? That is a repeating decimal, right? So it is also um, a rational number. All right, what about something like 1.232323? And it continued on forever and ever. So I'll do dots saying that that pattern continues. Is that one rational? Yes, because it goes two, three, two, three, so it repeats the two, three. I could write it with that little line over the two, three, right? So it does repeat. Yep. And so this is still a yes. What about, here's one that's kind of tricky, and I don't think that they give you this tricky one, but I'm going to show you because it's really not that hard to follow. What if the pattern went like this? One, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one one zero and that pattern continued it is a pattern it is repeating but can you put a line over any of those sections to show that it keeps going with that pattern like we can with the two three or the four no what would you put the line on the ones keep going one bigger this is actually not rational it's irrational all right, so and pi that we start seeing in the upper grades. Um, pi is how we represent, um, like we use it for circles and formulas and circles. And it's this number that we just estimate at 3.14 because it's like this and the pattern is 
well, it doesn't have a pattern at all, just crazy numbers going on and on. So most numbers are rational, but if they have a weird pattern like this, irrational. And, and like pi and some other things that we'll see later grades, those are also not going to be rational. They'll be irrational. Let's also have a couple more definitions. Well, I guess I should give you a couple more examples first. So we know any fraction, like 1 half, 3 fourths, 2 sevenths, those are also rational. So this is a yes on the rational. Um, it could be a negative fraction, and I could be a mixed fraction as well. And that would be a yes, even if it's negative. All right, so fractions, decimals, any number like regular number, I don't know, seven. Oops, seven is also going to be rational, or eight, or nine, or ten, or any number. All right, so there's our definition of rational. Let's look at the definition of an integer. I feel like in math we just have definitions of tons of things and we just say them and we think everyone should know what we're talking about when they don't always. An integer is a very fancy word for negatives and positives that don't have fractions. So let me see, what does the book give you as a definition for the integer? I don't, I, I wanted to try to follow the book's definition, but I don't see their definition. An integer, integer. Opposites, nope. I like to try to follow whatever definition you see, and I have the book open, and I thought they had an, a definition for integer, but I don't really see it. Okay, an integer is a negative or positive. a uh, number um, with no fractions or decimals. So this chapter we're mostly working with integers. That means we're working with negative numbers. Well, why would we work with negative numbers? Well, because when you borrow money from someone you have to be able to represent that negative, right? It, so our number line is a great way to look at these integers. We would have zero here in the middle, and we would count up one, two, three, four, and we would count down negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and we need to know that as we get bigger in those negative numbers, those are actually smaller numbers, right? So if you think about it, if I'm at negative 10, that's smaller than negative 4 because you have to think of it like you owe me $10 or $4. Which one's worse? Which one's more? Um, that would be the negative 10 is you're owing me more. So the further you go on the number line to the left, the smaller that number is. So you're asked to put things in order from least to greatest. You have to know that you split up your numbers into negatives and you split them up into positives. And you look at those negatives separately because the bigger they are, the smaller they are. Kind of crazy. And then with those positives, obviously the bigger they are, the bigger they are. So the numbers just go up this way. So for integers, there's no fractions or negatives. We're just right on those um, whole, not whole numbers, those numbers. Okay? And whole numbers, oops, are just the positive. So we're going to go from 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 and keep going. Whole numbers are positive, no decimals, no fractions. We love working in the world of these two types of numbers, right? No fractions, please, Miss McKenzie. Okay, so we have no integers, or no integers, no fractions or decimals with integers or whole numbers. So let's look at classifying a couple things. So what if we have the number, so let me get an example here. So what if we have the number 
negative 4. What are all the ways I can classify this negative 4? I can classify it as an integer. That's like the, the one that you go, well, it doesn't have a decimal, doesn't have a fraction. Integer. Is it also going to be a whole number? No, you can't have negatives in whole numbers. What about a rational number? What was our definition again for rational? Well, any number that is written as a fraction, a decimal, basically it can't have that weird repeating stuff on a decimal. So definitely this is a rational. There is not one specific name for every single number. It can be in many categories, and this is an example. And eventually, as you go up in the grades, you'll learn that this is also a real number. It's also a, nope, not a natural number. Those are the only other ones that we aren't covering yet. So there's more names and spec um, that, that, that break up our numbers and, and we can call them a specific thing. So I'm going to show you something. I don't know how clear it's going to come through on my iPad. Oh, not bad at all. Here's a little chart, and I love the chart because they're saying, okay, if I have the number zero, it is a whole number. Oh, but if it's a whole number, it's also an integer. And if it's an integer and a whole number, it's also rational. So if you happen to be a whole number, guess what? You're in all categories. Like the number we just thought of, like negative two, what did we do? I can't remember. Anyway, the, it was an integer. It's not a whole number because it's not in that middle group, but it is rational. So if you're in this outside group, you are just rational. So you could open those pages of the book that I printed for you, or you can now get to that through the Pearson Realize. And it was in the, you have to click the classes and then you can see that. But either way, and I showed it in that little video, so either way, you can see this chart, and I just think, okay, what if I have one half? Where is it on my chart? That'll tell me. It Does it go in the middle? No. Does it go in here? Nope. It goes out here, so it's only rational for the definitions that we have. Okay, what if I have the number three? Okay, if I have three, it is whole, integer, and rational. So you can kind of use that little chart. I love the charts to classify numbers, okay? So I think we've gone over those in pretty good detail. Let's look at, um, let's see, let's look at some absolute values. What does it mean to have an absolute value? What does the symbol look like? Maybe I'll just show it on here again because I don't want to write out the definition. Oh, that works so good. Okay, the absolute value of a number is the distance from zero a number is on a number line. Okay, so let me say that again. The absolute value of a number is the distance from zero you are on a number line. Do you ever go negative distance? Um, no. We never go negative. I don't care if I walk backward somewhere. I am not going negative. So therefore, these answers, when you put them in an absolute value, they're always going to be positive. Okay, positive, positive, positive. So let's look, the little symbols are the two little lines here like they have on the N. So let's look at this first one. What is the absolute value of two? And they drew a beautiful little number line here for us. Here is the number two, here is zero, how far is 2 from 0. How many jumps did you have to make? 1, 2. It's 2 away from 0, so the answer is 2. So if you see a regular number like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, those are just going to be their number out of the absolute value. Now let's look at a, this one's a decimal, it doesn't matter, let's look at a negative in the absolute value. Well, how far from zero is 1.4 negative? Well, here's zero, here's negative one, and it's 0.4 more, right? So it's gonna go more to the left because it's um, smaller than negative one. So we're gonna be here for about 1.4, almost to that half mark. And how far away from zero is that? Well, it's 
1.4 from 0 and we lose that negative. So if it's negative under the absolute value, it comes out as a positive. That's it. That's all an absolute value is. Even if I have a fraction, so they give um, 3 halves and neg negative 3 halves, we will notice that they both have the same answer. So 3 halves is 1 and 1 half, right? Or I can call it 3 halves. And they show it on my graph. If I couldn't remember how far away 3 halves is, we know that it's 3 halves from 0. So it doesn't matter what number you have in there, that's going to be the answer. Um, and it's going to be positive. So negative 3 halves is going to be 3 halves. Positive 3 halves taking out of that absolute value is also 3 halves. So when you do the operation of the absolute value, lose those symbols. That's how you got rid of those symbols. I said, OK, I had 3 halves. Absolute value of it is 3 halves. I no longer have the little lines. OK? That's what absolute value is. Now they'll ask you things that are a little more tricky, like, what if I have the absolute value of negative 5? And I want to know which one's bigger and the absolute value of 3. So they might do something like this and say, OK, which symbol, greater than, less than, equal, would you put right here? Well, for this one, let's take the absolute value of both sides. So the absolute value of negative 5, so we're going to lose those symbols, it's going to come out as 5. And the absolute value of 3 is going to be 3. Which one's bigger, 5 or 3? 5 is, so my alligator better eat my 5. Got it. Yeah, I can be dorky. It's OK. Keeps you awake, right? Like, oh my goodness, this is my teacher. All right, so what if I had, oh, let's do one like this, negative 2 thirds, and we don't know, um, negative 1 half. All right, so we have two negatives, so how are they going to come out of your absolute values, right? They're going to come out as positives on both sides. So we're going to have positive two-thirds and positive one-half. I'm running out of room, so I had to write them a little smaller. What symbol should we put between those after we absolute value them? What's bigger? How could I find that? I don't know. Two-thirds. If I have a big pizza and I break it in half and I give you that half, or I have a pizza and I break it into thirds and I give you two thirds of it, which one's bigger? Well, two thirds. I'd rather have two thirds pizza. Well, I'd probably better not have two thirds pizza because I don't have a tummy ache. How else can I find that if I am just not real good at understanding fractions and being able to visualize some of these basic fractions? Well, I can use my calculator and I can divide the top number by the bottom number. Oops, I should just do 2 divided by 3. <laughs> it had another num problem on there. So I can see that it's 0. 0.66666 repeating forever. And this just rounds at the end. It doesn't really stop. That's, that's actually a rational number. It doesn't stop. And 1 divided by 2, we should already know, is 0. 0.5. So then we can compare those. So sometimes the decimals are confusing, I mean the fractions, and, and you can't think when they're real close, like maybe I have 5 sevenths and 4 eighths. And you can't think you can use your calculator, divide those, get your decimals to compare them. Okay? So we know, boop, boop, 2 thirds is bigger. All right, let's look at a decimal 1, 2. We we're talking about fractions. I wonder if I can, yeah, I'm trying to waste less paper, but usually you can see through it, which bothers me. I don't know why. I'm going to waste less paper and not let it bother me. Okay, so what if I have like negative 7.6, and we want to know if that's bigger than or greater than, let's just do 7.6. How are those two related? Well, I take the absolute value of this one, I take the absolute value of this one. What is the absolute value of negative 7.6? Or negative 7 and 6 tenths, right? 
How do I say that? Six tenths. It's in the tenths place. All right, so this would come out as 7.6. Woo, 7.6. What does this side come out as? 7.6. They're equal, so we would have equal. So if they're the same number, oh, I can't remember what problem number it was on. It's my fourth. So if they are the same number in the absolute value, all well, they're going to be equal. Let's look at comparing some decimals, though, because not very many of you are super good at this. Let's do this one as negative one. OK, there we go. I just we've I think we covered this quite a bit or you should have covered this quite a bit last year year before but you know it's just one of those things that people aren't real good at decimals and fractions so I try to keep bringing back things like that's the sixth then this one's out tenth hundreds thousands so that's a hundred and twenty three thousands which is kind of weird oh hold on I'm giving you a close-up of all my freckles all right so Let's do the absolute value of both sides. We know this one's going to just be 5.23. This side over here is going to be 5.13. Lose that negative, lose those symbols. Which one's bigger? What you do is you first compare the whole numbers. They're the same. And then our tenths are the same. Then the hundredths. Which one's bigger? Two or three? Three. So this one is larger. The 5.3 is larger, or 5.13. So you just keep going out, remember, and compare each one until they're different, and whatever's bigger is going to be bigger. So even though this has more numbers on it, doesn't mean it's bigger. All right, so I think we've beat that one to a dead horse. Let's see. What about this word opposite? And I hate, really, that they put opposites in with absolute values, because that's most commonly the mistake with absolute values, but maybe that's why. They really want you to understand. Opposites are just the opposite sign of a number. It just changes the sign. So that is it. Okay, so if I have, so opposite sign. Keep the number. However you want to think of that. Let's do a couple examples. Okay, what if I have um, two? What is the opposite of two? We're not talking absolute value. They're totally different. What is the opposite of two? The opposite is negative two. All right, so what if I have negative one half? What is the opposite of negative one half? It is positive one half. Okay, it works this way for decimals. What is, uh, if I have negative 1.3, what is the opposite of negative 1.3? Well, the opposite is positive 1.3. So negatives and positives um, are just the opposite sign of each other, but they have nothing to do with absolute value. I, I'm still going to get papers from you that have that wrong. Okay, so remember, try your homework in realize if you um, can access that I'm still gonna put it in the other spot too and goodness if you're watching this video next year I guess you won't even know what I'm talking about so anyway here is a video to help with 4.1